<clears throat> okay, so we're going to talk about chapter five, study guide test. So the first task here on problem one is to simplify. They give us the expression secant theta, sine theta, cotangent theta, cosecant theta. And um, there's no clear identity. We need to apply nothing squared. So the Pythagorean identity doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So what I'm going to do instead is turn everything into sine and cosine. So the secant of theta is 1 over the cosine of theta. Sine of theta, I don't need to fool with. The cotangent is the cosine of theta over the sine of theta. And then the cosecant is uh, 1 over the cosine of theta. So... Um, I start canceling things out. Oh, sorry. One of the sign. I mean. Double check myself here. Okay, yeah, we're all good now. So the cosine cancels with the cosine. The sine cancels the sine. One over the sine theta. Cosine theta. B is in Bravo. Now let's talk about the second problem here, which is if secant theta is negative 5 fourths on the interval 180 to 270, which is Q3, so this tells us we're in Q3, find tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is positive in Q3, so we know we're going to have a positive value. It means we can disconsider these right away. No, those aren't even possible. Um, so we can relate these using an identity. Uh, probably the easiest approach would be to use a reference triangle, but in this chapter it's about identities. So let's see if we can relate the tangent and the secant using Pythagorean identity. So I need the, the tangent, which is uh, sine over the cosine. So if I divide everything by cosine squared theta, I will derive a, an identity uh, that involves the tangent and the secant. All right, so let's plug in negative 5 over 4 here. And subtract one from each side. All right, so tangent squared theta equals 25 over 16 minus, and let's change this to 16 over 16. Okay, so tangent squared theta equals 9 over 16, and tangent theta equals the square root of 9, which is 3. We'll do square root of 16, which is 4. And normally we would do plus minus, but in this case, we know it's positive. No need to worry about uh, plus or minus. So G is in golf, is the correct answer here. Put this uh, up here simultaneously. All right. <clears throat> Number three says if a book weighs P pounds and is on a flat surface, at an angle of theta degrees, the coefficient of static friction is given by this formula. Uh, Cp secant theta equals P tangent theta. Which of the following is an equivalent equation? So Cp secant theta equals P tangent theta. So we want to solve this for C. First of all, I can divide away P from both sides. That's obvious. And then C, secant theta equals tangent theta. So if I divide tangent theta by secant theta, so the tangent is the sine over the cosine, and the secant is 1 over the cosine. So I multiply top and bottom by cosine here. will cancel and I get sine theta 
corresponds to C is in charm. So that was just simplifying. Number four says simplify again. Tangent X over sine X plus one over cosine X. Uh, so let's see what we got here. Once again, no other strategy presents itself immediately, so I'm going to change it to sine and cosine. So the tangent is the sine divided by the cosine over uh, sine of x plus 1 over the cosine x. So sine over cosine divided by sine is also, you can also write it this way. Probably make more sense if you see it like this instead of what I'm about to do. So those signs cancel. And I've got 1 over cosine x plus 1 over cosine x. So this is 2 times 1 over cosine x. And that's 2 times the secant of x, which is uh, j as in Juliet. Number five says, if x equals pi over three, find the sine of x plus pi. So sine of x plus pi, and we're told uh, sine of x, or x equals pi over three. So this is the sine of pi over three plus pi. Both of those are on the unit circle, so we can use that sine sum identity, which is going to be sine alpha cosine beta minus or I'm sorry, plus cosine alpha sine beta and alpha is pi over three beta is pi so that is the sine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi plus the cosine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi. In a lot of trouble with the unit circle, so make sure you know it. Sine of pi over 3 is equal to 3 over 2. Cosine of pi is negative 1. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. Sine of pi is 0. So that makes this uh, negative square root of 3 over 2. And that is uh, B as in Bravo. Several different ways to work that, but that was the way it was intended to be worked. <laughs> Moving on. Number six, find the exact value of the sine of 105. Well, that's also the sine of 60 plus 45 degrees. Both of those are on the unit circle, so using the sine sum again. Remember that that is... Uh, Sine alpha, cosine beta. Plus cosine alpha, sine beta. And so in this case, that is the sine of 60 degrees times the cosine of 45 degrees plus the cosine of 60 degrees times the sine of 45 degrees. Sine of 60 degrees, once again, radical 3 over 2. Cosine of 45 degrees, radical 2 over 2. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. And then sine of 45, radical 2 over 2. So this is radical 6 over 4 plus radical 2 over 4, which is radical 6 plus radical 2 over 4. That corresponds to... H as in hotel. 
Remember, you can check these answers with your calculator. Um, so don't hesitate to do that on a test. A problem like this is worthy of that extra attention. Um, two reference triangles, one for alpha and one for beta. Now, alpha and beta are described to us as existing in quadrant four. So from 270 to 360. So in both cases, they're in quadrant four, meaning um, this is, of course, not the scale. Quadrant four is all the way around here. So these triangles just stand in for the real triangles. And we won't worry about that too much. We're told the cosine of alpha, in other words, the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse is four to five. And we're told that the sine of beta is negative five over 13. Don't consider negatives where we're doing distance. Triangles are about distance, so we'll disconsider that negative for the purposes of this triangle analysis. And then we'll worry about whether it's positive or negative when we find the trig values. Because <coughs> we know it's in Q4. Both angles are in Q4. Both of these are Pythagorean triples. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. So by the Pythagorean theorem, we can complete those triangles like so. And uh, then we're going to use the tangent difference formula because the task is to find the tangent of alpha minus beta. Um, now, both of these are in Q4 where the tangent is negative. So this is going to be tangent alpha uh, minus tangent beta over 1 plus tangent alpha, tangent beta. Okay. And so tangent alpha is 3 fourths, but it's in Q4, so negative 3 fourths. Minus tangent beta is 5 twelfths, but again, negative, because it's in Q4. And then 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So this is a mess. Your calculator can make short work of this. But we'll go ahead and do it by hand. <clears throat> so that's negative 3 over 4 plus uh, minus a negative creates a, an addition. 5 over 12. And then 1 plus negative 3 times negative 5 is positive 15. And 4 times 12 is 48. So um, the common denominator here, negative 9 over 12 plus 5 over 12 over uh, 48 over 48 plus 15 over 48. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 4 over 12. Over 48 plus 15, 58 plus 5, 63 over 48. Remember that to divide by a fraction, we can keep, change, flip. <clears throat> so if I cancel these out, that's uh, 12 goes into 12 once and then 48 four times. I get negative 16 over 63. Again, your calculator can make short work of that, but sometimes it's good to refresh our memory about these skills and at least try to do it by hand. And so that's B as in Bravo. Get the entire page up here. <clears throat> B as in Bravo is the correct answer. Often missed, one of the most frequently missed. So this one is worth a little additional study time on your part. Number eight. <clears throat> Which is, which expression is equivalent to the cosine of theta plus pi? What you need to apply here is the cosine sum formula. So cosine of theta uh, plus pi is like alpha equals theta and beta equals pi. So remember that that is uh, cosine alpha times uh, cosine beta. And then minus sine alpha sine beta.
So the cosine of pi is negative 1. And then the sine of pi is 0. So that term disappears. So here's our answer. F is in Foxtrot. <coughs> here's another one that's pretty frequently guessed, and it's not that hard. So the horizontal distance traveled by a soccer ball gets kicked with an initial velocity v and an angle to the ground of theta is this formula. Which of the following is an equivalent expression? So x equals 1 over 32 v squared tangent of 2 theta. So this is a double angle ID. We need to remember that tangent 2 theta is equivalent to uh, tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. And so if we substitute that value in for tangent squared theta, hey buddy, hey. thank you, got some gloves for me? What? Thank you, but oh, wipes, okay, that's cool. Thank you, my friend. Go on. So we see that uh, B is in Bravo corresponds to our result. So this is using the double angle identity. Hey, see, buddy, take care. Thanks, Bob. So which expression is not equivalent to cosine 2 theta? So you remember that cosine 2 theta, the double angle cosine, had three identities. So the question is only which one of these are not one of those three identities. And the answer is this. Cosine of 2 theta is not equal to that. That, in fact, is equal to 1. But anyway, uh, these three are the cosine 2 theta identity expressions. And J is not. Read the question carefully. Because if you skipped over that not, you would just check the first one that is and miss this problem. So J is in Juliet is the correct answer. 11. Uh, Cosine theta equals negative 3 over 5 in Q3, no, Q2, I'm sorry. Find the exact value of the tangent of 2 theta. So cosine theta is on the interval Q2. Find the exact value of tangent of 2 theta. So we need to apply the tangent double angle identity. So remember that the tangent of 2 theta is 2 tangent theta over 1 minus tangent squared theta. And the way we can know tangent of theta is once again a reference triangle. So I've got theta here. I know the cosine is 3 fifths. So the ratio of the adjacent to the hypotenuse is 3 over 5. And then the Pythagorean theorem lets me know that that's 4. So, uh, and also I know the tangent is negative because we're in Q2. So tangent theta is the opposite over the adjacent, 4 over 3, but it's negative because we're in Q2. Now we can plug that in and have our solution. So that's 2 times negative 4 thirds over 1 minus negative 4 thirds squared. So that's negative 8 over 3 over 1 minus 16 over 9. So that is uh, negative 8 over 3 over 9 over 9 minus 16 over 9. So that's negative 8 over 3 over negative 7 over 9. Remember that to divide a fraction, we can keep, change, flip, and I see something that cancels here. 3 goes into 3 once, and then the negative 9, negative 3 times. So that's negative 8 times negative 3 is positive 24 over 7. Hey, brother. Hey, buddy, come on in. Super easy to make a sign error right there. Let's see which answer that corresponds to. C is in Charlie, looks like. Yep.
Booyah. Good one for trigonometry, right? Oh, all you people out there listening, you got the best trick teacher in America. <laughs> well, you got a trick teacher. <laughs> See you, buddy. Be cool, man. Mm. So 12 says sine of theta equals 0 0.6. Find 1 over cosine of pi over 2 minus theta. So we got to do some finagling here. You did a few of these in homework problems. So we know that uh, the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta equals sine theta. So that's one of our co-function identities. And so 1 over the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is going to be 1 over sine theta, which is 1 over 0 0.6, which is 1 over uh, 3 fifths, which is 5 thirds. Or I think that's closest to 1.7. But... Yep. J is in Juliet. So that's about uh, 1.7. Okay. Point two, then we're 13. So solve the following. Cosine of x plus 2 equals 0 on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So uh, if cosecant x plus 2 equals 0, Cosecant, the right the second. Cosecant x equals negative two. Remember that the cosecant is one over the sine, and so the sine of x equals negative one half. If I take both sides to the uh, negative one tower, reciprocate both sides, and a legitimate algebraic step. So they're looking for solutions other than zero and two pi, but otherwise on the unit circle. So where is the sine of x negative one half? Well, the y coordinate would be negative one half here and here. And so this one is seven pi over six. This one is 11 pi over six. So D is in delta. Easy if you know the unit circle. Impossible if you don't. Well, hard if you don't. 14. The refractive index of several gems is listed in the table below. Find the approximate or appro yeah, approximate refraction angle theta sub 2 of a sapphire when the angle of incidence is theta sub 1 equals 45 degrees. Use Snell's formula, which is the sine of theta sub 1 equals n sub 2 times the sine of theta sub 2. Or n sub 2 is the refractive index of the gem. So that's a lot of very uh, jargon-filled language, but we're worried about the sapphire. So our n sub 2 is going to be 1.77. So we know our sine of theta sub 1 equals 1.77 times the sine of theta sub 2. We want to find theta sub 2, where theta sub 1 is 45 degrees. So the sine of 45 degrees equals 1.77 times the sine of theta sub 2. Divide both sides by 1.77. And remember that the sine of 45 is radical 2 over 2. So if I need to find theta sub 2, I need to take the sine inverse of that expression. And when I use the sine inverse, I need to be in degree mode. You're going to be switching modes like crazy here, so just get used to it. Sine inverse of square root 2 divided by 2. Divided by 1.77 
is 23.5 degrees to the nearest tenth. And so that looks like G is in golf. I'll put this up for the whole screen here. G is in golf for 14. That one is also frequently missed, and I think it's because people don't switch the mode appropriately, so they get confused. And you see you got ridiculous things like 0 0.69. I bet that's a distractor answer that it's what you get when you plug in uh, radians or something, when you have it in radians mode. All right, so we're going to solve another trig equation. 4 times sine squared x minus 4 sine x plus 1 equals 0. So we're going to let u equal sine x, so we can turn this into a quadratic. And um, we need to regroup our center term in such a way, uh, using m and n, where the m plus n is negative 4, and the m times n is positive 4. So that would be negative 2 and negative 2. Okay. So negative 2u plus negative 2u. The first term and the last term stay the same when we do this process. We're going to group by parts here. So if I factor out um, 2u, I get uh, 2u minus one. And then over here, I need to factor out a negative one, two u minus one. And you see, I now have that matching binomial I'm always looking for when I do this process. Two u minus one times two u minus one. So this is a uh, perfect square trinomial. And I can rewrite this if I want as 2u minus 1 squared equals 0. And so that means 2u minus 1 has to equal 0 for this to be true. We'll go back now to the sign. So 2 times the sine of x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to each side and then divide by 2. You get sine of x equals 1 half. And we're concerned about solutions oh for all values interest so on the unit circle positive one half the y value happens here and here so that's pi over six and five pi over six so we need to create two solution families pi over six plus two pi n and five pi over six plus two pi n And that corresponds to D, as in delta. They do 2 n pi. Remember that multiplication is commutative. In other words, I can switch those factors around. I don't know why they want to put pi at the end, but whatever. Entire page. So that's 15. Challenging one. 16. says <clears throat> the tangent of theta over 2 equals cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. Solve this on the unit circle. So first of all, we want to plug something in for the tangent of theta over 2. So we want to use an identity and um, let's see. So I'm going to use something for Let's solve on the right side here. So tangent of theta over 2 equals cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. So let's do something for the cosecant. Remember that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. If I divide through by the sine squared theta, I'm going to get 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals 
cosecant squared theta. So this is going to make our life easier. We plug that in for that uh, term. So we get tangent of theta over 2 equals 1 plus cotangent squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. So the plus cotangent squared theta and the minus cotangent squared theta cancel out, and I get tangent of theta over 2 equals 1, which means the tangent inverse of 1 is going to equal theta over 2. Once again, we're worried about values on the unit circle. So where is the truth on the unit circle? Tangent inverse of 1. So that's going to be... Now it should be in degree mode here. Right? It's going to be 45 degrees. So if I multiply both sides by 2, I get theta equals 90 degrees, which is pi over 2. One other place where this is true, remember the tangent inverse is constrained quadrant 4 and quadrant 1. It can't tell you that there's also a solution in quadrant 3, 225 degrees, or 3 pi over 4. The problem is, if that's theta over 2, we multiply that by 2, it's outside of this range. So that's not a valid solution anyway. It's only H as in hotel. All right. That's 16. Let me put it all up here simultaneously. Number 16. We're getting there. Number 17 is next. And it says Mach number. So the angle theta at the vertex of a cone-shaped shock wave created by a plane so you got a plane and it's creating a cone-shaped shock wave behind it and you got some angle theta at that vertex um, is related to the Mach number by this equation. 1 over sine of theta over 2 equals m. So find the Mach number of a plane if the cosine of theta is 1 half. So cosine of theta equals 1 half reference triangle theta adjacent to hypotenuse is this. So this has to be the square root of 3. So uh, the sine of theta over 2, I'm going to replace using this identity. So that's the square root of, we actually don't need the reference triangle, but it's there if we did. Because I can use this one and it involves the cosine of it. So we're going to replace that uh, denominator with the square root of 1 minus cosine theta over 2. So that's going to be uh, 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 1 half over 2. Because the cosine of theta is 1 half. We're told that. And your calculator can handle that expression. So that's 1 divided by the square root, which automatically is kind of a delineator, 1 minus 1 half is 1 half, so 0. 0.5 divided by 2. Uh oh. Too many parentheses. Okay, so the answer is 2. B, as in Bravo. <laughs> Okay, number 18, find the exact value of the tangent of 105. So we want to find two values on the unit circle that add up to 105, 60, and 45 of the candidates I choose. So remember that the tangent sum is... Uh, 
tangent alpha plus tangent beta over 1 minus tangent alpha times tangent beta. So first of all, let's find those tangent values. Tangent of 45 is easy. Because uh, that's the sine of 45 degrees over the cosine of 45 degrees, which is radical 2 over 2 divided by radical 2 over 2, which is 1. So the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. The tangent of 60 degrees is the sine of 60 degrees over the cosine of 60 degrees, which is radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is radical 3. So we've got our values. Let's plug them in. Tangent alpha it is the 60 degrees, so this is square root of 3 plus 1 over 1 minus, and then the tangent of alpha 60 degrees, so radical 3 times 1. So that's uh, 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 3. Another way to write that. Um, and then they, they do some funky simplification here. So we can multiply, and this is where you might want to turn these into decimals because they rationalize the denominator, which we'll do here. I'll show you how to do it. 1 plus the square root of 3 over 1 minus the square root of 3. I need to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. <clears throat> so for this numerator, first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, <coughs> last times last, Square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. And then for the denominator here, that's a difference of squares. So 1 squared minus square root of 3 squared. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 2 on the square root of 3 over negative 2. So that's negative 2 minus the square root of 3. Another way to say it. They have it flipped around, but it's F, as in Foxtrot, that matches our answer. Once again, you could have converted to decimals at this point, and might have been the best strategy, because there's a lot of ways for this to go wrong. But it is a good challenge. 19. Rewrite the sine of 10 theta times cosine 6 theta as a sum or difference. So sine times the cosine, so this is sum to product ID. And remember the sum to product goes like this. Uh, sine alpha times cosine beta equals one half times the sine of alpha plus beta plus the sine of alpha minus beta. So that is a product to sum. So if I plug in 10 theta is alpha, 6 theta is beta. So that's 10 theta minus 6 theta. Plus the sine. of 10 theta, this should be plus here, sorry, minus 6 theta. And just simplify those arguments. Uh, 16 theta sine of 4 theta there. It looks like D is in delta. Yes. That's product to sum identity. Very last one here, 20. All right, so number 20, and again, the last one. What we need to think about here is this 
we're going to use a product to some ID and let this be alpha and this be beta. So just that part, remember that cosine alpha, cosine beta is one half cosine alpha plus beta and then plus cosine of alpha minus beta. So, so in this case, that'd be one half times the cosine of 465 plus 75, which is 540 degrees, plus the cosine of 465 minus 75, which is 390 degrees. And the reason why that's advantageous is both of those values are on the unit circle, even though it might not seem like they are. So we'll plug this expression. We we'll have to be careful that one half can be rather confusing. So this whole thing is equivalent to what I highlighted up there. So we'll plug in that, and we've got that additional one half hanging out up there. And then the cosine of 540, 540 degrees. Well, if I go 360, what's left is uh, 40 to get to 400, and then 140 more, so 180 more. So that is coterminal with 180. Cosine of 180 is negative 1. And then 390, 360, and then 30 more. So that's coterminal with 30 degrees. The cosine there is radical 3 over 2. All right, so 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And then in here, negative 1 plus radical 3 over 2. Let's see what our answers look like, so I'll know how to simplify here. So I need to turn this into one term on the inside. I need to give it a common denominator. So I get uh, 1 fourth times negative 2 plus the square root of 3 over 4. And if I multiply that by 1 over 4, oops, sorry, should be a 2. Did that again, did I? Okay, so we've got negative 2 plus the square root of 3 over 8. And let's see which answer that matches. H is the same thing. Again, commuting those terms, you have to be able to do that mentally to recognize which one of these is the same. Alternately, you could convert everything to a decimal, but that'll be a tedious and time-consuming process, so better if you don't have to, but by all means, if you have to, do it. All right, that's it for Chapter 5. Good luck, you guys.